Welcome! We're taking a look at exercise 13-1 from Murox PHP and MySQL. This exercise works with modifying a shopping cart application, and it also works with some custom functions and shows the difference between passing by value, passing by reference, and works a little bit with namespaces. Just a quick warning on this exercise, it's a little more involved than previous exercises have been and there's a lot of concepts in it, so it is a little heavier. The work itself isn't much more difficult, there's just a lot going on in here. So with that in mind, let's go ahead and get started here. Step 1 says run the application that's stored in the exercise starts, chapter 13 directory. I'm going to pull this parameter off and just reload. This is what we get when we first bring it up. Step 2. Test the application by adding items to the cart, modifying items, and emptying the cart. So we've got added one flute, so let's add two clear nuts. So we've got that. We can modify the quantities. I can say three flutes. I can say zero clear nuts and update the cart. And it updates appropriately. And I can also empty my cart. And it says there's no items in your cart. Okay, I'll go back to the add item, which was our original screen. Step 3. Open the index.php and cart.php files. And notice that we're working with this session variable. So we'll look at the session variable in chapter 12. But what that is, is it's a, a super global array that you can put things in and into and out of. And that session is available to us throughout our application. So kind of like we, what we've done in other assignments, we're adding items into an array, working with them, but we aren't actually storing this in a database. We're just storing it in the session so we can access that without having to worry about a database. Um, so that's a quick overview of what the session is. It's just an array that stores temporary items. Okay. Moving on to step four. The very first thing I'm going to do, because I know I'm going to type something wrong here, is I'm going to put in my favorite line, the i i set. Display errors to one, just in case I mistype something. I don't want to get that white screen on the right side. Okay, now we'll go into step four. So we're in, going to be in the cart.php, and it wants us to modify our functions, so the first parameter is a cart parameter. So it tells us what these function declarations should look like, and we just modify the functions so they look like that. Okay, great. Modify the, you know, step five, modify the code for the functions so they use that cart parameter, and to do that we just use cart instead of the session. So if I had search and replace, uh, I would go ahead and do that. I keep forgetting what search and replace is in this editor, so I'm just going to replace all my sessions with that cart variable. Almost there. There we go. Okay, so now they're getting values, setting values on this cart variable instead of the session variable. And all of these look good, so that's great for step five. Step six is a little long-winded, and it's a little difficult to understand. But what they're saying is we don't need to use this session array everywhere. We should modify these functions so that whenever we're calling a function like add item or update item, we use our cart variable instead of uh, using session everywhere. Because we just modify those functions to take the cart as the first parameter. So we'll go ahead and send the cart as a first parameter. But to do that, we uh, need to create a cart variable, which we don't have yet. I'm going to modify this section up here at the top where we're saying if the session 
uh, at cart 13, cart for chapter 13. If session 13 is empty, then we create a new array. So let's make this work for our cart variable. So if our session at cart 13 is empty, that means we can create a new array for cart. If it's not empty, that means we can use the one that's already there inside the session. Great. So we've got our session array, we've got our cart variable, and we're passing that into our functions now. Okay, there's a couple other places I want to modify this. I don't want to use the session cart 13 down here. We just want to use the cart variable, and in our empty cart session, we want to do the same thing. I actually don't have to, but since we're switching to use cart everywhere, we'll unset cart, and we'll unset cart 13. So the next time uh, we run the page, after unsetting it, we'll get a new array. Okay, so now we get into the important item of passing by value versus passing by reference. So we've modified the code here to send in a cart array into our functions for add item and update item. And that's great, except that we are passing by value. What does it mean to pass by value? Well, it means I've got a cart variable inside the index.php. When I call add item, I'm sending in that cart variable. However, since it's passed by value, when we get inside that function for add item, for example, the cart that this add item function sees is actually a copy of the one from index.php. So as I modify things inside this function, it's not actually modifying the one from index.php, it's modifying the copy that the, the function got. So what that means is here at the bottom of add item, I'm modifying this, this array, the cart array. I add a new item to it. That's going to be modified inside this function only. So when I get back to index.php where I called uh, add item, when it returns from calling this function, the cart in index.php hasn't changed because add item was working on a copy of that, uh, that array. So since it was a copy, what we need to do is actually return that value, return the cart, and same thing for update item. We need to return the cart Okay, for get subtotal we don't need to because we're not modifying the cart at all. We're just returning a subtotal. So since now we are returning a cart, we need our index.php to handle that and use that returned cart. So I'm going to set cart equal to add item cart. Same thing for the update. I have to say cart equals update item cart. And the second thing we need to do is go back and update our super global array. And we need to set that equal to our result or the cart that came back from the function. In this case, now we should be good with step six, um, modifying it so that we are sending the cart array and not using the global um, the global session array. Okay, moving on to step seven, modify the code in the cart view so that the get subtitle function works correctly. Right now we have a problem because we've got all these items added to our cart, uh, but we've got a server error. I thought I put, I did put that in there. Okay, well we've got a server error in our um, cart view because we also need to send our cart in to that function. Well, that's not cool. And I set display errors one, and it doesn't like that. Let me 
scan through here quickly. I don't see anything wrong. Oh, ha ha ha. I missed my cart. I copied when I'm, or I cut when I meant to just copy and paste. Okay. Now we'll try adding a flute item. And we have our flute item. So step seven was to add the cart into our get subtotal. Uh, without passing in the cart, this would have thrown an error. Okay, so now we're good through step seven. In step seven, we're going to modify the index.php. Well, before I get there, let me test that the other functions work correctly here. So I'll add another clarinet, and I'll switch this to three flutes, and yes, everything's working again as it should. So I'll empty cart and go back to our first screen. Okay, step eight is to modify the cart to pass by reference. So what I was just describing about passing by value, where when we call it, use a cart uh, parameter, pass that into our add item function from the index.php, uh, the add item function gets a copy. So we have to store the result and return the result. Well, if we pass the, the cart by reference instead, what that means is that the add item, I'll go ahead and make that modification here. I'm going to push the AND here. When this add item gets this cart value, it's no longer a copy of the item. It's a reference to the actual item in index.php. And what that means is when we modify the cart and add items to it, it actually adds items to the, the cart inside the index.php as well. So we won't need to actually return the cart anymore because the original one is modified. And we'll do the same thing for update item. So updating the, the function definition step 8. Step 9 is modify the code so they don't return the cart array. So we don't need to do this anymore. And so now that we've got the ampersand cart for these two, uh, we don't need to return the value anymore. We don't need to update the get subtotal because, again, it doesn't modify the cart array at all. So we're good on this this side, the cart PHP side. Step nine or step ten is to modify the statements in the index.php. So now, since we're passing by reference, we no longer need to say cart equals. We can just update the item. And since it's by reference, the cart variable that we pass into update item is the same variable. And so when we updated an update item, it's also updated inside index.php. OK, so that should be all updated. Let's go ahead and save this and try it out again. So reload the right side. We'll add item. I've got one flute. It will get three trumpets. That all looks good. Switch that to two flutes and zero trumpets and see what happens. And that all looks good. OK, great. So our pass by reference is working. Go ahead and empty that cart. Go back to our main screen. OK, step 11. In this case, we're changing it so we're, we're storing the library in a namespace. And what a namespace does is it kind of groups our functions together. So in this case, I've got an add item. I've got an update item. I've got a get subtotal. Let's say my program grows and grows and grows, and I start pulling in some third-party libraries. Well, it's possible that I end up with two or even more functions that look the same. So I could have an add item that I wrote. I could have an add item from some third-party library. I could have myself written, written two add item functions. So that gets confusing on which one you're actually calling. So using a namespace actually helps resolve that because you can designate exactly which function you want to call. And to do that, we just add the, the keyword in there. Uh, use or namespace, namespace, and you give it your last name 
uh, so I'll put Neville cart, and then we'll put it, all of this stuff in brackets. So the whole namespace is enclosed in brackets. Ah, I decided to indent namespace. Okay, great. So now all these functions are inside of this namespace, which means when we call this add item, we can't any longer just say add item. When we do, let me try to reload the or add an item and see what happens. We get a, a fatal error. It, it says the function is undefined now because uh, because now it's inside that namespace, which means we need to prefix our function with our namespace. Neville cart add item. Same for update item. Neville cart update item. We reload the right side. Then we are okay, except for our last function call, which was inside the, the view. Neville cart get subtotal. Uh, missing argument three for update item. Okay. It kind of got mixed up there because I was uh, had an error in the middle of a submission. Okay, so now all of our functions are prefixed with my namespace, the Neville cart. If I had a third-party library that also had a get subtotal, we'd prefix it with the namespace for that third-party library. So now PHP knows exactly which get subtotal function to run. And that's kind of what uh, namespaces give us. It, it just a more specific way to identify our functions. Okay, so that's good for steps 11 and 12. And we're moving on to step 13, use an optional parameter. Okay, so we're going back to cart.php. And it says to update the get subtotal function, so it accepts an optional parameter that lets you specify the decimal places. So with an, well, it gives us an example there. With an optional parameter, let me just say decimals equals two. An optional parameter means if I send in this parameter, then it will use the value that I sent in. If I don't send this, then it'll get the default value, which is equal to two. Okay, step 14. Test this change to make sure it works correctly. To do that, modify the cart view.php so it displays three decimal places. Okay, well, so we got our decimals as a parameter. We want to put that into our number format. There we go. And then in our cart view where we call get subtotal. Let's test this by passing in three and see what happens. Uh, I'm going to go back to view cart. And so now our subtotal shows three, three decimals decimal places. If I put it to f 5, uh, let's go to view card again. Now I've got five decimal places there. So that's good for step 14. And step 15, modify this code so it uses the default value of two decimal places again. So if I don't pass in a number, then it will use the default value, which, as we saw in, get, in our function declaration, it's 2. So going back to our view cart, this should show two decimal places. So that's how you could use an optional parameter. And that's our last step for chapter 13, exercise one.